Hey, uh, YouTube fans and uh, folks out there in the internet world, this is Max Abramson, Libertarian candidate for president. Since we don't have any uh, filing periods or debates or anything going on uh, this week, I instead of talking about the presidential campaign, I thought I'd talk about what everyone seems to be talking about on my social media feeds on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else, which is the new trailer for the new Star Wars movie coming out on Christmas, which is uh, Star Wars Episode Nine, the much waited for uh, end of the saga film. Um, the actual trailer, the new trailer is just about two and a half minutes long. Uh, unfortunately, they make you wait about uh, through half of that before they start showing anything. And then all they show is about, uh, was it 30 or 40 seconds of actual new footage. And all of that, of course, is just them standing around in front of a desert. And they show some of the old characters, uh, Lando and Leia. They show a whole bunch of uh, Imperial ships showing up. Uh, and, of course, all the old famous characters and laser blasting into the planet. And, uh, of course, it all finishes with uh, Lei, um, Ray, I should say, and Kylo Ren in a great big uh, sword fight at the end. And I'm, I'm not saying that, that I'm going to prejudge and say that this is going to be a bad movie, but I'm going to say that uh, George Lucas should never have sold the Star Wars franchise to Disney, Disney's uh, one of these, you know, modern globalist, politically correct corporations. And if you uh, saw Han Solo, the new Solo movie in the theaters, as I did, and you paid good money for it, probably disappointed about making Lando Calrissian a pansexual and all this other weird politically correct nonsense. Really, uh, if you saw the very first Star Wars movie, there's a lot of kind of libertarian themes, and especially, of course, Han Solo and now with the new one, it's all about political correctness and all the cultural Marxism and and the new, you know, new politically correct thought police, and you can't say anything to offend anyone. And and uh, honestly, I thought the Solo movie was okay. I thought it was a bright spot in a series of bad movies. But when I walked out of Episode 7, walked out of the theater, um, I actually said out loud, looking around for my friends, I, I said... Am I the only one who thought that that was a bad movie? And the very first word I heard was no. And actually quite a lot of people thought it was a bad movie. I've got a tradition going all the way back to being a child. Where every single Star Wars movie that comes out, I see it twice in the theater. Make sure that I didn't miss anything. And I did that kind of out of habit for Episode 7. And Episode 7, as much as you know, you know, friends know that I'm not a big fan of the prequels. The prequels had a story arc. George Lucas made them. They were very expensive. They were very glitzy, a lot of special effects, uh, pretty weak on story. Um, some of the dialogue was kind of campy. Um, of course, every time someone gets blown up on behalf of Padme, they say, I failed you, my highness. Um, that does get kind of old, but I kind of miss the prequels now. You know, Empire Strikes Back, of course, is still the best. Um, had the largest amount of creative talent involved, George Lucas started it, and Irving Kirshner uh, directed it, and John Williams was allowed, you know, to do whatever he wanted. They did a 2000 uh, special effects shot. It was probably, at the time, the most expensive special effects movie ever, other than maybe, you know, 2000 Space Odyssey. But even the prequels were better than Episode 7, and Episode 7 was kind of mediocre, but they did have some good points. I didn't like seeing Max von Sydow get killed off right at the beginning. Um, and then episode eight, it didn't even seem like a Star Wars film at all. And it looked like they totally tore up everything that they started with from episode seven. I, if I'm going to see multiple movies, I kind of expect a little bit of a story arc. If you're going to come up with a sequel, continue telling the story. Don't tear up the old movie and come up with something new and totally unrelated. And then, uh, episode eight was just not a good film and it didn't say anything about, Star Wars at all, which they, they could have just recast different people, given them different names, and made it a different movie, and it would have been fine. Um, the joke, George Lucas ruined Star Wars. No, he didn't. Uh, Disney's ruined Star Wars. And so Episode Nine's coming out, and I'm wondering, should I even see this once in the theater? Should I even see this once at all? Is this even going to be worth two hours of my time? And we've, those of us who grew up with Star Wars, we, we kind of dreamed about it, and what kind of new, creative, innovative ideas is George Lucas going to come up with? And we'll never know. All we know is that from the first from the first two Disney installments, 
they're just rehashing the old ones. Um, the timing is totally off. Uh, the special effects are very expensive and are made to look very expensive rather than realistic. Um, characters are all shallow, one-dimensional, two-dimensional. There's no conflict going on there except for Finn. And uh, you, you're not left asking a lot of questions when you start. You're left asking yourself a lot of questions when you walk out of the theater. Why did I pay for that movie? Why did I pay to see that movie twice? Um, this is kind of the, the downside of capitalism. Uh, friends know that uh, I'm definitely not a socialist, um, only because socialism is a horrible system that leads to mass poverty, shortages, and so on and so forth. Uh, capitalism is more like the lesser of two evils uh, because the free marketplace and in inventors and innovators and writers and creative people put out a lot of stuff. And one of the downsides of free market, free enterprise system is you got to buy a lot of movies to get a really good one. You've got to buy a lot of paintings, a lot of comic books. You've got to buy a, a lot of books. You've got to buy a lot of music CDs or download a lot of movies, movies and songs. Uh, before you can get the occasional gem, and there are no gems. Uh, Rogue One was not a gem. Rogue One I, I could see once and maybe never see it again. They, they really could have gone creative with the ending and decided not to. Solo, they decided to just, what was it, Kathleen Kennedy just said, well, you know, I, I'm sure people want to see the backstory and how Han Solo got his name. No, I don't want to see how Han Solo got his name. I, I can pretty much guess how Han Solo got his name. I don't need to spend, you know, two hours and and, you know, $30 for two movie tickets to, to see a piece of fan fiction. So the, Disney's got four movies out. Sounds like they're canceling all the little side stories. They're not going to do one movie a year anymore. The whole, whole thing has been torn up. Um, I've written stories. I've written screenplays. And not to toot my own horn, but my, you know, I can do better than Disney. And I hate watching a movie. I hate paying to see a movie, you know, after I've seen... Star Trek 2, probably 10 times. I've seen Star Trek 4, probably 10 times. I've seen Empire Strikes Back, probably 20 or 30 times. And each time I see these great movies, I see some of the little details in, in RoboCop or Predator or Total Recall, where the, the people who made the movie really cared about it, or Miracle on 34th Street, or Braveheart. Even though Braveheart's a very simple movie about, you know, some of the Scottish fighting for freedom against uh, English tyranny. It's clearly just a, you know, a battle royale, but there's conflict in there. Um, do you give up your shot? You know, the, the, the up and coming king of Scotland, do, do you give up your chance to be a king under another king or do you risk it all and fight to have a country of your own? There were real serious questions asked. And I dare say even Star Trek V, uh, William Shatner's disastrous de directorial debut. Even William Shatner in Star Trek V, widely panned as one of the worst movies of all time. At least they asked the really hard questions. At least uh, he tried a lot. He bit off more than he could chew. Uh, and the the direct the the, the writer strike and the worker strike and the Paramount cutting his special effects budget from four million dollars to two million dollars was was terrible. Right in the middle of the film. And on top of that, Paramount stepping in and saying, well, you, you can't have a real god at the end, so you've got to change this, to change him to an alien. Sorry if you missed Star Trek V. Don't even, don't even bother. There's no spoiler alert because it, there's nothing to spoil. It's just a, it, it, an okay movie with a terrible ending. Just it, it, as soon as God appears with a beam of light, just go ahead and, and just hit the stop button and don't even watch the last 15 minutes of that movie. That's 15 minutes of your life wasted. You're welcome. I saved you 15 minutes. Uh, but the, the new Star Wars films are just crap, all four of them so far. And so for Star Wars Episode Nine, they just put up another two-and-a-half-minute preview. They're calling it a trailer, trailer number two. The first one came out four months ago, and this one even more than before cemented it. I'm definitely not going to see it twice in the theater. I might see it matinee, but I might not see it at all. So see you guys back on the campaign campaign trail this is max abramson libertarian candidate for president just give my two cents my opinion on that whole uh debacle and don't forget to click like and subscribe and leave your comments down below